Let's do the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko, and it's time to go through the pages of our national dailies. We have Jide Johnson who joins us uh, this morning to share his thoughts on some of the big stories on our front pages. Jide Johnson, it's good to have you join us. All right, then uh, we'll start off with the daily independence, hoping that we're able to establish uh, a great uh, audio communication with our guests. And on the daily independent, the PDP crisis is still uh, making the rounds. Atiku rejects bid to substitute Wike for Okoa as vice president's pick. Away from that, federal government launches 2.3 trillion naira plan to close country's infrastructural gap. You also find court, court disqualifies Oboro Wari as PDP Delta Gubar candidate recognizes Eddie Vibe and Delta PDP calls for calm hints and appeal. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson resigns after 54 ministers quit. Lawan Lambas Nigerian Correctional Service over Kujay jail break and 16 firms pre-qualify for five power plants privatization. Akura Madu's court rules kidney donor not a minor adjourned to August the 4th. Uh, Akura Madu's court rules kidney donor not a minor adjoins to August the 4th. And again you find Buhari orders leaders to, write, to raise 93 billion dollars to boost economic capacity of Africa. That's what you find on the Daily Independent newspaper. Let's take a quick look at the punch. Kujé prison invasion. Interpol gets uh, fleeing inmates data and border security tightened. I take that again. Interpol gets fleeing inmates data and border security heightened. 4,300 inmates on the run after 18 jail breaks. Lawan laments e swap. Uh, that's a, you know that's a ride on his own. Lawan laments e swap recruiting five thousand fighters says report and Falana blames the federal government. So you begin to ask yourself uh, if you have four thousand three hundred inmates on the run after almost twenty jail breaks, and now we hear the government saying or report saying we have been able to capture uh, those inmates that have escaped. It just looks like we're a disaster waiting to happen. Terrorists trooping southward. Akira Dolu cries out. Terrorists trooping southward. Akira Dolu cries out. Oil companies reject federal government's penalties over gas flaring. Marketers depot fight over 16.6 billion liters fuel diversion. And reps probe custom over auction PMS others you still have 16 fire pre-qualified or I take that again 16 firms pre-qualified for five NIPP's privatization it was also on the daily independent and NCDC confirms 84 monkey pox cases and three deaths commuters grown in Lagos Ibadan expressway greet log Salah but, but you also want to agree with me that uh, apart from the fact that, yes, there might be Salah, the, f the queues have returned and we know what happens when you have uh, vehicles actually queuing to get petrol in different petrol stations that really are on the road. But I said this morning on uh, the punch, just before we move away from the punch, you have kidnappers demand 20 million naira for Ikiti travelers and whole priests. Federal government declares Monday, Tuesday, public holiday uh, in celebration of Salah. Driver remanded for throwing feces at last mile official. A lot goes on. And over 940 can of pilgrims stranded. Government very hopeful. Hopeful about what? Court sacks Okoa's candidate, Iberi's loyalist, wins. And Mark Aberi Bay present as United Kingdom court remands Ekurumadu and his wife. That's it on the punch. We take a look at the nation has been made available by our paper vendor. 
The Kuje attack, Senate shocked by no CCTV poor security. Indeed, uh, you also find Dume urges sanction for those who failed in their duties. Prison not designed to resist external attack, says Minister. Buhari summons emergency and security meeting. The writers you find underneath the board caption. And Oshun 2022, four injured as PDP APC supporters clash in Ede. Uh, Kwankwa so presents flag to NMPP candidate and student endorse Oyetola Adeleke. I won't let Obas down. Uh, talking about the election for Oshun State. A Koromadu organ donor, not uh, a minor, United Kingdom court rules. A Koromadu organ donor, not a minor. How to achieve global economic recovery? This is what the World Bank is saying to Nigeria. I mean, I just like the fact that the World Bank is very, very patriotic of the Nigerian economy. Boris Johnson quits to remain as British Ketaka Prime Minister. Uh, that's what you find right there. That's the much we can take. And quickly, let's check out the Guardian newspaper. Quite interesting headlines. The NAFDAC, uh, that's uh, NAFDAC Joins Research Institute, strike food safety threatened. NAFDAC Joins Research Institute, strike and food safety threatened. Agric Medical Water Soil Institute paralyzed. Absence of NAFDAC at port spells doom for food and drug safety. Port congestion worsens and product approval delayed. Riders on the need towards making Nigeria's football league competitive, more like an editorial. And you find uh, Donny Okukpe's withdrawal as Obi's vice presidential pick court disqualifies Delta PDP candidate. You find Catholic priests abducted in Benway, nine die, 12 injured in Kaduna, Zaria Road crash. Uh, Fluto wave faults, money laundering claims from Kenya. Uh, you just have, uh, I actually saw that video uh, where you have a Kenyan expressing a lot of displeasure over Nigerians and her activities outside of Nigeria. But that's the much we can take this morning on the pages of a national dailies. Let's quickly have uh, G.D. Johnson weigh in on some of the big stories this morning on the front pages of a national dailies. G.D. Johnson, thank you for joining us this beautiful Friday morning. Good morning to you, Messi, and good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank you very much. And thank you. Well, I think um, the, the issues on the papers. Centers and good politics, security, and economy. And I think that let's start with the political stories first. Hello, Messi. I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, uh, one of the one, media headline across the newspaper is article rejecting the plan for him to pick to drop Okoa as he's running, as he's running. I was running me. Well, um, it's, it's, it's left for, for the presidential candidate of the party to consider the election before him, but apparently they want to win the election of conference 23. Because any party that wants to win the election of conference 23 must be able to have a united front going towards 2023 electionary process. And as far as um, the PDP is concerned, the EU of which is your concern for for for, for the PDP establishment because which is a factor is one of the people that stabilize the party and the rest of article the likes of article in Tambo Saraki Saraki left PDP to join APC in, in 2014 that actually brought back the party into power. If the likes of Wiki had left the back, then there wouldn't be PDP to be. So it's important for them to know how to manage that crisis because it's a major crisis. And if the party really wants to have a strong showing come 2023, they know how to manage this particular this particular issue. Now, if you go, if you take that story down to the state, 
you even discover that the state where yeah, it could pick is running with the crisis brewing up in that state itself. Now you have a situation whereby the court has rejected the the the, the PDP nominee for the for the for the Delta State gubernatorial election, who happens to be the loyalist of the government. That's the vice presidential running mate for for Atiku, Goa, and he has been replaced according to the court judgment by the loyalist of uh, James So you could see that at the national level, Okowa is having a, a pressures from, from established groups within the party. At the state level, you have been, you have, you have seen the court judgment yesterday that has removed Okowa's, um, Okowa's um, preferred candidate, the candidate that actually won the primaries, from being the flag bearer for PDP in, 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 in Delta State gubernatorial election. So you see the entry. So at the national level, Okoa is having an issue. At the state level, Okoa is having an, an issue. Is it not, is it not related to, to um, the wiki, um, article, vice presidential candidates? It's always there for us to see much, much more later. But my advice to PDP is that if they want to have a strong showing, they must be able to receive their post primary crisis. Otherwise, they have already signed their death penalty concerning that election. Then quickly, I'll go to Oshun State with respect to a story we read that talked about four being injured, PDP and APC um, members passing in, 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 in Oshun State and four people who are injured. The Oshun gubernatorial election is a third major test case for 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 INET is a major test case for the security agency because this and the, this about the last um, election we have of cycle election before 2022 election and it's a high stake it's a high stake election one um, it's, it's a state controlled by APC and um, we could recall what happened in 2019 with respect to this particular election this particular state the election that took place concerning this election where the result was not declared as a result of the chief, as a result of the returning officer receiving the phone call to declare the election inconclusive. And we knew what happened. Now the stake is even higher in the sense that it's, it's an indication of what will happen in 2022 election. Don't forget the incubating governor is a constant to the to the APC, APC flag bearer in this in this election, and the PDP also is interested in that. So, the security agencies, INEC, a lot of attention of Nigerians and the world on on a few state election. And I hope INEC and the security agencies will ensure that this election takes place in a peaceful manner. And the will of the people is, is respected with respect to this. We don't want a repeat of what happened in twenty in twenty nineteen, which was the charade. I mean, uh, the, the fact that you have uh, stakeholders lobbying to have uh, Wike being picked by uh, the former vice president, also uh, the presidential flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party, uh, Laji Atiku Abubakar, uh, what, 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 um, what's the influence that uh, Wike, the governor of River State, uh, has on the party? And what becomes of you know, the PDP in 2023 if, uh, you know, he's not been picked because he feels like he's a force to reckon with and uh, this crisis right now that the party's experiencing seem to be centered around the fact that uh, his interest, I mean, we, we saw the, uh, the primaries, his interest is not to some extent being reflected even though he's not even outrightly said that. Well, um, uh, we case a factor in PDP, there's no doubt about that. PDP, PDP will have been long dead since 2015 because the likes of, like I said earlier, the likes of Atiku, the likes of Saraku, the likes of Tangua, even the national chairman of PDP, Yocha, and many, many, many like that, left PDP to join APC. To join APC, and that 
actually help the emergence of APC as a national party. So those that stay behind the PDP to ensure that the party will not die are feeling aggrieved. And there's no doubt about that. There are two you know, political parties, there are caucuses. Now there are there is the caucus of those that left and the caucus that stayed behind. Now if we can belong to the caucus that stayed behind, and we can, when you look at the election, there were two major factors, Atiku faction and Wiki's faction. Okowa from, from the onset, he belongs to the Atiku faction. And as far as the other groups are concerned, they felt that, one, the faction that won the presidential ticket actually also picked the running made for the party, which they felt shouldn't be. At least the other faction that stayed behind should be, should be involved. That's, that's the thing. If you check what we have read, Wike is not left alone. You've listened to the governor of, of, of Benue State. You've listened to the governor to the governor of of, um, of Edo State. You've, the governor of Oyo State has not spoken. The, gov the former governor of Ekiti the governor, the former governor of Ekiti State has spoken. So as far as some of these caucuses are, are, are concerned, we, we have not won the election. We are already been eliminated. We are already been sidelined. We are already seen a winner takes all approved from our presidential candidate that has not assumed the office of the presidency. When he now assumed the office of the presidency which the 1999 constitution has amended, has given the power of an emperor, what would he do? So that's, that's the fear of people that belong to, to, that, to, 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 to that camp. They are just calling for a sense of belonging. You could see how it is pretty difficult for APC to pick his own limit. APC is being cautious. Don't let me say difficult. Now let me use the word cautious. APC is being cautious in picking his own limit because it wants to involve as many stakeholders as possible in the process. Hmm. So uh, we'll just uh, keep fingers crossed. It might just be a lot uh, for the People's Democratic Party. And as an yeah. opposition, a lot of people think that they haven't uh, had their acts together. Putting their act together is what a lot of people had expected, uh, looking at the role that they play in the politics. But um, let's quickly stay with the prison break. Lawan Lambas Nigerian's Correctional Service over the Kujé bro, uh, Jake, uh, jailbreak. That's what you find on the Daily Independence. Now, away from that, the nation also talks about the uh, prison attack. Uh, Senate shocked by no CCTV and poor security. The president also had mentioned that he's probably uh, dissatisfied, you know, with the failure of uh, intelligence system. And uh, <laughs> these are some of the stories. Now, on the punch, uh, they talk about the fact that Interpol is getting these... Uh, uh, prison prisoners or inmates, uh, they have their data and they have actually heightened uh, security, the security at the borders. Uh, what, what do you make of all of this reaction? Just uh, one and the same thing. Blaming uh, the correctional yeah. center for the failure of all of that. You also have the minister saying that the prisons are not meant to repel attacks. Well, um, just imagine what happened in Great Britain when ministers resigned and forced the prime minister to resign. Now, not the seller resigned, even the minister of interior, not the head of prisons and correctional facilities in Nigeria, not a single head as the head responsible. Rather, we are seeing people shifting blame, looking for who were to blame. We are in a society where people do not have self dignity. That, that's 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 just that's just the truth of the matter. And where you have the Senate president asking questions, questions that is 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 elected and and selected by his colleague to provide to provide answers to. What does the Senate committee? If the Senate committee on on interior. Uh, could not do carry out this oversight function on correctional facility in Abuja. 
How would they carry out oversight function on correctional facility across the length and breadth of this country? You see, a systemic failure, a systemic failure that calls for people to resign across board because they have failed to fulfill the oath of office and the oath of allegiance to the constitution of this federal republic. That is to protect the lives and property of the citizens. And then you begin to ask yourself this question. How did this number of people, how are, we, how are they able to just disappear into the thing just like that? When the prison, <coughs> when the break, <coughs> when the break happened, why can't we activate our security agencies? We have different formations. You have police post, you have area command, you have you have DSS in states, you have them in local government, you have different intelligence agencies. Can't you activate them around 24 or 48 hour activation of security agencies across Abuja? Because these people, I'm sure they cannot take flight. They can only move by road. They can only move by road. So how can we activate that to prevent that? And then we start, the president is looking for answer. The Senate president is expressing shock that there is no CCTV in, 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 that, in that facility. And the minister is saying that prisons are not designed to repel attack. How low can these people think? And how insensitive are they to the plight, to the plight of Nigeria? It's, 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 it's unbelievable what is happening. It's, it, is, it is ridiculous. For uh, a prison of that caliber, especially a prison that holds uh, very, very high uh, suspects or what have you, those who have been charged with the act of uh, terrorism, do, do you think that um, there should have been some level of surveillance? I mean, it should be properly guarded, understanding the, the kind of persons that are, are kept there. And my question is, what... What is the level of our intelligence? You see, preventing crime has to do with intelligence gathering. And if you check the money we spend on security vote, and you spend the money that is spent on intelligence, because the, the question you need to ask is, what communication network are these people using to communicate? How are our security agencies not able to intercept the communication network of this of, 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 of this terrorist. How are they not able to? They are using the normal phone lines. They are using so so. How did they? Why are they able to mobilize themselves to move from wherever they have camped to that to Kuji to carry out that terrorist attack? And then for them to evacuate those that they have come to rescue and to move to a safe location. And we have not been able to gather intelligence to that effect. That can only, open, that can only happen if there is complicit on the part of people that we have given responsibility to, to gather intelligence to provide security in Nigeria. That's, that's my thinking. I might be wrong, but that's my thinking. And I'm entitled to my opinion. Of course, no one is disputing that with you, Jide Johnson. Uh, another one that calls for a lot of concern, it just feels uh, that, you know, the public health might just be under threat, especially where you have, uh, you have NAFTAC saying that they are joining other research institutes to strike. And so food safety is being threatened. It means that they can't go about, you know, carry out their duties of ensuring that your products that are coming, food is actually safe. Uh, for consumption. You know, the police threatened to strike. ASO has been on strike. Um, um, now, you see a situation whereby the research institutes are now dark. So, food and drug safety is threatened. What has not gone on strike in Nigeria? Everything, we are in a state of cobertures, in a state of anomaly. Are we safe? There is this false sense of safety in Nigeria. 
But that first sense of safety does it guarantee security? How secure are you to go to wherever you want to go? And I'm sure every one of us that are living in our homes to go to our respective places of work, we always say, and our family members are always on their knees, praying for our safety back home. That is the situation we have in Nigeria. It's a state of anomaly where there is a collapse a collapse of government at every level because there seems to be no government. Because even after that, what is the reason behind? And we still have a minister of labor and productivity and his feet and feed you to call himself and to pride himself as the minister of labor when every sector under labor and productivity in Nigeria has embarked on one form of strike or the other. No, but but if, you, if you look, if you look at you know, as as much as is valid, and some people would say it's it's okay to embark on you know this strike action. Do you think that unions and other sectors of the you know the country's bodies actually explore other options before you know resorting to strike as a last resort? What statement have you had from Minister of Education with respect to us to strike? There is, there is a high degree of insensitivity from people that have been appointed into offices to take responsibility and address you. Especially the various ministry, departments, and agencies of government, they have been appointed to, 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 to carry out oversight and oversee the activities of, 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 of these agencies. And it's, it's the, the high degree of irresponsibility. The word responsibility is the ability to respond. The word responsibility is response plus ability. Now, when that is not in place, it shows that you're irresponsible. When you are disabled with the ability to respond, it shows you are irresponsible. And it, it's very, very clear because before issue, now issues we come up, but before this issue degenerates into crisis, what are the things that you have done to deal with this issue? When you don't deal with issues, when they arise, it turns into full-blown crisis. Now, this is um, this is a labor issue. Now, how have you dealt with the labor issue? What level of engagement have you gone in doing in dealing with the various unions? What level of meetings have you had? What level of negotiation? Have you done before this thing leads to total breakdown that eventually leads to strike? Strike is usually the, the last resort for any labor union. And it shows the insensitivity or the unwillingness of management. And management in this context is government. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, I mean, we're talking about NAFDAQ here, because it, it, it looks like you have everyone just waking up and, and back in on strike without considering other means, you know, of negotiation or communication or trying to reach out before the strike. Just imagine what happens, you know, to the public, to the public health, where you have uh, an agency as NAFDAQ and backing on that strike. And you have all the um, institute as well. It is really, really disastrous. Yes. So, uh, what are we dealing yes, with here? Yes, now? you are talking about public health. You are talking about public health. <laughs> People that don't care about public safety will care about public health. Messi, it's we are in a dark street. Okay. And it shows that the present government has gotten to its wit's end. And then um, the, the capacity, I'm not sure that the, the present government has the will with that or the capacity to solve the idea added problem facing Nigeria and which they are part and parcel of creating. Mm. All right, uh, quickly, just before we call it a wrap on the Daily Independent, do you think that this is rational? FAN is going to shut down the Lagos airport runway till September uh, to fix the air field lightning 
is, is this a rational thing to do as much as there's need to fix the problem? Let's see. <laughs> I can hear you. Yes, I don't know what that technology we use in Nigeria, because we are not in, we are not even in a global village. We are now in a global living room where everybody has access to whatever happens at the global level. You see people constructing airport, constructing bridge in weeks, some in days. And then here in Nigeria, you see us still doing things as if we are in the stone age. That's that. Well, while we were growing up, roads were constructed day and night, not was but by companies like Strabag Guvanti. People in my generation will tell you Strabag Guvanti, Julius Becker, Sonel Bonnet. Now, these companies, these construction companies, they construct roads day and night. They make major construction there. In actual sense, in order not to affect the traffic flow, they construct the, 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 the major road where you have traffic bottleneck in the night. But what do we have? Because these people want to prove to us that they are working. So they make our lives unbearable. Just, you see government constructing roads and without make, providing alternative routes to <laughs> And then you also see this construction company loading it all upon themselves and they are doing us a favor. We elected people into government to make life easy for us, but they will come into government, they will make life difficult for us when they want to go to about their own normal business. They will use siren to go through traffic clock jam. They will drive against the one way and they will make us to go through pain and hardship because we have elected them into office. Jide Johnson, thank you so much. We, we have to let you go. We also appreciate you every other time you are part of the breakfast. Uh, we look forward thank to sharing you. more of your thoughts on some national issues. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Friday. Well, that's the size of it on Off the Press. We take a break. When we return, we'll be heading straight to our first major conversation right here. Please stay with us. <laughs>